This is Kelly from Watsy Obsession. Thanks for taking time to watch this video. This is part two in a series on Bella Watts and the dramatic changes we see in her over her tragically short life. The part one video is linked up there in the cards and it was just an introduction to the topic and also a look at the joyful Bella that we see in pictures and videos during her first year when she was a baby, an infant, and then a slightly older baby, and she was just full of smiles and giggle and a kind of positive sort of sass. And unfortunately, after that first year or so, Bella's short life experience took a dramatic change and it did not seem to be for the better whatsoever. It's a sad story, but it's an important story, and I think that Bella's story is worth telling. This video is going to deal with two topics that are rather controversial when it comes to the Watts case, the Watts family, and, well, you know, Bella and Shanann, and that is the pictures and videos of Bella and Cece with the Easter Bunny and Santa and holidays that occurred year after year even though the children were clearly terrified. And as Shanann herself says, Santa makes Cece poop her pants. Hey, Mulvano. She pooped her pants. Santa said she pooped her pants. Hey, Mulvano. Santa said she pooped her pants. Bye, guys. And the next topic is Bella's hair. And we're not talking about Bella's hair just to talk about Bella's hair, but we're going to be talking about Bella's hair and the comments that are made about Bella's hair and Bella's reaction to the comments that are made about her hair. I do suggest if you think that these topics are going to be upsetting to you, maybe you just don't watch this video, that's okay. But we are going to be looking at these topics. The videos and photos speak for themselves and the change in Bella's behavior over time, over her short life, also speaks for itself. Now, it is no secret that there is a lot of passion and emotion surrounding the Watts case. And also, when we discuss the family dynamics, it can absolutely set the room on fire. I've tried to tell a story that stays true to what we can see through the videos, through the pictures, through the testimonies of others, and through the change we see in Bella's behavior over time. Although some people might have a strong reaction to the content of this video, the idea is to present Bella's story in a way that is not polarized, but rather in a way that allows you to see some of Bella's experience in her short life and to honor Bella. Before going further into this video, let's talk about the elements that must exist in order for a toddler, a toddler in your life to be happy. So we're specifically looking at Bella here. So as we watch the rest of this video, you want to consider, are these elements present or balanced for Bella? So the elements necessary for a happy toddler. Of course, the basic needs must be met and they must be in balance. So there is proper food, quality food, nutrients, adequate sleep, appropriate sleep, and of course, shelter. Um, Bella, say hi. She's hungry and grouchy. So, yes, baby. I want to buy this. Bella wants this. Look at you guys. Hold this and we're open the next one. It smells amazing. It smells like, um, hold on, hold on, mommy. Hold on, hold on. Smell it, smell it. Hold on, hold on. She's mad because I bit it. That is amazing. Like, delicious, you guys. Tastes like literally cinnamon rolls. Okay, okay, Bella. She loves cinnamon rolls, so she really wanted them, obviously, as you can tell. She was mad because I took a bite out of it. But those are mommy's. Mommy earned those. Mommy's gonna get them. She's not happy with me right now. I do just want to make a note in the name of authenticity that those were little clips from an 18 minute long video where Bella said that she was hungry in the first 30 seconds and for 18 minutes, Bella was teased about eating, about satiating her hunger and about trying the cinnamon bar pro bars that she had been so super excited about 18 minutes 18 minutes <laughs> 
in order for a toddler to be happy, they must feel safe. So this means that they trust their caregivers. They trust that they're going to, particularly their caregivers, are consistent and they put that toddler first. That's going to allow the toddler to feel safe. The third requirement for a happy toddler is that they're given boundaries and limits. This is so important because if a toddler is not given boundaries and limits, their world feels very big and they feel very vulnerable and it can feel very chaotic. When they're given boundaries and limits and they trust their caregiver, they feel free to explore their world safely. And this leads to the next element. For a toddler to be happy, they must feel independence and they must feel a sense of success when they are exercising that independence. So for example, when they try something new and it's pleasing to them or they start laughing or they push themselves a little bit, say they could climb one step before, now they can go up two stairs. That is a genuine sense of success for a toddler. For a toddler to be happy, they must socialize with peers, with adults, with a range of people, lots of interaction with others, and they also must be an, envir an environment that is stimulating indoors, outdoors, and varying and changing, or else they get bored. In order for a toddler to be happy, they must enjoy and benefit from a sense of touch. I was, Lori. They're in bed. It don't take me long. They're sleep trained, so I literally just pop them in bed and they're good to go. I don't rock them, don't, don't cradle them. Put them in bed and they're done. You can never give enough hugs or extra snuggles. We all know how, how it is. If somebody, you know, you're nervous about something and somebody just gives you a little tap on the shoulder, puts their arm around you or, you know, touches you just for a moment, it lets you know that they're there, that they care, and you feel supported, that touch can literally give you more confidence as an adult and certainly for toddlers. Finally, in order for toddlers to be happy, their environment should be relatively free of chaos. So to recap, the ingredients for a happy toddler are that their basic needs are met and balanced, that there's a sense of trust with their caregivers, that they have limits and boundaries, that they find independent success, that they have social interaction in different environments, that they benefit from touch and affection, and that their environment is free of chaos. When Bella was a newborn baby, when she was an infant, even when she was a slightly older baby, up until about a year old, Bella had all of those elements going on in spades. She was taken care of. It seemed like her parents were encouraging her to have independent achievements. It seems like she was hugged and tickled and cuddled and snuggled. And she said, all of these elements in her life that are necessary for a little one to be happy. This? Mama? Daddy? If my observations and the observations of many, many people are right, all of that changed at some point and we saw those changes manifest in Bella. So exactly what is it that happened that caused Bella from feeling secure and loved and happy and safe and cared for to feeling anxious and unsettled and sometimes it seemed quite unhappy. You're good. Good job. <laughs> Yay. Good job, Bella. Good job. You did it. How did things for Bella go from that, that clip that you just saw with lots of praise and admiration, to this? Your baby needs some clothes. I don't have anything you can play with right now, Bella. Candy. No candy, Mama. I don't have candy. No, Bella. Bella, you can't play with Mommy's lotion, baby. So, um, so this is addiction palette number five. She keeps stealing my makeup. I'm telling you, this is why I lose makeup. Um, she just grabbed my lipstick. I'm wearing my Lulu Row today. Sorry guys, I'm dropping everything because of this child of mine. Hence why I lose makeup, you guys. Bella seriously destroys my... Okay. 
since um, my girls steal my makeup and I'm Bella particularly. Bella steals them and breaks them as you saw her do in action today. But here's my Christmas leggings. Can you see them? I haven't been able to get a picture of them yet because um, Bella doesn't take good full shot pictures yet. Um, hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. We have the Grinch over here. Um, Bella. Somebody's still a grouch. We have the Bella. Grinch over here. Bella, did Santa Claus come see you? We have the Grinch. We have the Grinch here. All of those videos that you just saw are clips from social media when Shanann was trying to promote her product Thrive from Lavelle. In my opinion, it's clear to see that part of the problem for Bella, part of the reason that Bella started getting less positive attention was because more attention was put on creating these little mini ads all day long, every day to place on social media to try to sell Thrive, which, come on guys, we all know was a go nowhere effort to begin with. It's really too bad Shanann got wrapped up in it. It was the last of nine MLM endeavors that Shanann committed herself to around January of 2016 when Cece was a very young baby and Bella was getting a little older. As Cece's energy level proved to be astronomical, Cece became the poster child of, oh my gosh, that baby, I have to run around and follow her all day long. It takes so much energy. Thank God mama thrives. Mama's little secret. Thank God I thrive. To keep up with Cece, I've got to use Thrive. She brought her couch to our big couch and is sliding down it. It's a lovely day in the life of Cece. Mommy's got her black label on. Mama's not playing. Cece, Cece, Bella, honey, stop pushing your sister right now or you're going to bed. Bella. I'll get it from her. Stop. I'll get it from her. She's off. There she goes. Bella, cut it out. I'll get it. Stop. I will get it from Cece. Cece? Bella's Cece. No, Cece. 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 Do squats. Now this whole MLM sales dynamic in the home with two young children did not always work well as you see. You might be surprised to know that this video continued on for seven minutes. After Cece was done crying here, she was asked to perform tricks for basically the remainder of the video. Cece does squat runs and uh, Bella was basically uh, left uh, out uh, of the picture. This was a typical uh, drive commercial uh, squat, scenario. Cece. Oh, good job, Cece. You're about to hear in the background here, Bella says, Mama, where's my blankie? Which she asked for several times during this video. In the absence of all those things that make a toddler feel happy and secure, Bella became very attached to sucking her thumb and her blankie. Yeah. Where's my blankie? I don't know, baby. Squat? 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 Two, three, ready? Squat again, ready? Good Mommy. squatting, Cece. Can you do this, Cece? Hey, squat run. Here, squat run, Cece. Cece, come squat run. Bring her here. Can you turn around? Bella, stop. Cece wants to play with this. From what we were able to tell from the videos that Shanann posted to social media, and that was a lot of them, along with the pictures and the commentary, the first time Cece's existence made Bella upset was when Shanann announced Cece's soon-to-be arrival to Chris Watts. So this was all a staged scene, and this was a theme in the lives of the Watts. Chris was to come into Bella's room and there was a notice on her crib saying 
that she was evicted because, you know, basically there's a new baby coming in. Apparently, in order to make that authentic, Shanann had to cause Bella to cry. Yes, it happened. There's evidence of it. Look at this post. Now, no, this is December 14th, 2014. So it's three days before Bella's first birthday. And here this says, we gave Bella her birthday slash Christmas present early. Took us 15 minutes to get her to even fake cry for a pic. Now, I don't know who us is because Shanann did this herself because it was a surprise for Chris when he came home. Is Shanann just a tone deaf mother? Well, maybe, but things like this were a reoccurring pattern through Bella's baby, toddler, and young childhood. Here we have Bella's first Easter and everything started out just fine. So there's that big old bunny and Shanann's holding Bella. Bella maybe looks a little apprehensive, maybe not. We're really not sure. This is all good. Oh, beautiful. Picture with Shanann and Bella. That is so nice. Couldn't we just leave it at that? Nope. We had to put Bella with the Easter Bunny by herself so she could be in a state of absolute terror. Something similar happened for, well, it wasn't Bella's first Christmas because she would have only been about a week old, but it was her second Christmas. Take a look at this. This to me is one of the most disturbing pictures. I'll just let you look at it. You guys tell me what you think. And as we all know, as far as the Christmas tradition of fear and horror went, it continued every year from there. And it wasn't just Bella's legacy, it was also passed down to poor Celeste. Look at those faces, guys. Now, I know from the comments on my videos that some of you don't agree that there's anything wrong with this. And if you're one of those people, I am just gonna say to you that you and I don't agree, and that is okay. Yes many people have pictures with Santa or the Easter Bunny and sometimes the kids are crying. But to do this holiday after holiday, year after year, making it a compulsory activity, even when the kids are pooping their pants and screaming and crying in horror to the point where they can't breathe, I'm sorry, that's not okay. And this is exactly the type of behavior the family dynamic, a parent to a child, that causes a child to start to feel as though they cannot trust their parent, that there is not a sense of limits and boundaries that feels safe for them, that their social and outside the home environment activities become scary. Maybe the children withdraw, they become melancholy, they start to have mood or behavior problems. So really what I'm essentially describing is a profile of the kind of student that I might work with in my job as a behavioral therapist. When you get to know students, when you get to talk to them, they will tell you about the things that happened in their past. And some of them are egregious and horrific, and some of them are more subtle and emotional. What we have learned is that sometimes the more subtle forms of abuse can be just as harmful as the more egregious forms of abuse. We don't want that for anyone. You've been a good girl this year, Bella. Thank you. She's... <laughs> Owen, okay. I need to, we, we need to make your sister feel better, okay? Yeah. She's very petrified. Can I get a picture of you and Santa? Please. Can you open Santa, up your Santa, will you hold her? Yes, I'll definitely hold her. Yeah. I want a picture. Oh, come on. Ready, smile. Bella, smile. Smile! You got Santa! Hold on. My phone. I'm going to try to get... Okay. Santa, I'm going to try to get uh, CC real quick. Okay. Hold on. Will you hold the camera for me? Come here. Hold the camera for me. Yeah, 
won't get to 25. Something I want to point out in these holiday videos, and this is something that we see in a lot of the home videos, including the videos that are around the topic of Bella's hair, which we are about to get into, is this, well, you know, it's quite the opposite of the seven elements that make your toddler feel happy and safe. It is betrayal. Hello, Miss Celeste. How are you? Say hi. Can you wave to Santa? Okay. Look, Santa got you a water bottle. I did. I got, there's something here for you as well. Did you ask Santa for anything else? Can you sit on Santa's lap with Bella? Right yeah. before I Bella, you sit on his lap with Bella, Cece? There we go. It was another bait and switch. Cece, would you like to sit on Santa's lap with Bella? Here, Santa, hold Cece. Here, let me get a picture. Ah! And I mean, just the look on her face is, I think it's just heartbreaking. So another kind of bait and switch scenario, which certainly did not foster a sense of trust or any of the elements that create a happy toddler in Bella is the pie in the face scenario and i'm just going to play a small little bit of it but the important thing i think to know about the pie in the face scenario is that bella was not paid any positive attention she was ignored when she was trying to be a part of the family and then she was humiliated terrified and then humiliated after she was terrified but the most important thing is this facebook post that was on Facebook the day before the pie in the face scenario, February 17th, pie in the face was February 18th. So Shanann and Chris had been gone on one of their Thrive by Lavelle trips and the girls were back at their home with Shanann's parents and Bella obviously missed her parents dearly. So the post here says from February 17th, while Shanann and Chris weren't away, FaceTime girls this morning for the first time since we left. Bella was emotional. Can't wait to hug our girls. Mommy and daddy are recharged. They come home. I'm sure she was thrilled. And they come home with, as Shanann says, Mommy, Mommy daddy, daddy, come, come home, home, home with a in the face. face. Come on, come on, come on. Real quick, real quick. Ready? Get her in there. Get her in. Go, get her. Go, go. Oh, no. Daddy. 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 I promise. You want to see? Hey, it's all off. You want to see? Stop, 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 stop. Look, look, look. It's all off. See? Watch. We're all done. It's all off. See? It's just your hair. Speaking of, it's just your hair. Perhaps that's part of Bella's problem with this pie in the face thing, the whipped cream all over you in the first place. Because Bella's hair is an issue. Well, rather, it's a topic that was made an issue ever since Bella was less than one years old. I want to point out something that was in the clip from the awful Christmas Eve, and that is when Bella is in the kitchen with Shanann, and Shanann had been calling her the Grinch. I think I counted nine times she called her the Grinch, you know, in the latter part of that video with a very mean look of disgust and contempt on her face, on Shanann's face. I'd be a Grinch too if I went through all that. That was freaking stressful. So when Bella and Cece finally are able to flee to the kitchen and Shanann follows them in there, you see Bella walking towards Shanann. And here, I'm going to play that little clip in slow motion and just 
check out what it is that Bella's doing. So we can see that Bella is pulling at and possibly, probably pulling out her hair. So we know that there were a lot of issues with and about Bella's hair ever since she was born, basically. And we don't know what the deal is with her hair, you know, thin, scanty, hard to grow, oh, grew in patches. We don't really know. We do know that we see a lot of pictures with Bella with beautiful, long, curly hair. And then in the next picture, maybe a day or two or a week later, there's no hair. So what's up with that? A lot of times it certainly does look like I got a nice symmetrical or asymmetrical cut, depending on a number of things. Um, and other times it doesn't necessarily look like that. One thing that I do know is that for particularly youngsters this age, pulling out hair on your body, well, your head, your eyebrows, and your eyelashes can be a stress response to, it's like an erotic stress response to fear and anxiety. And it's a condition. Um, did Bella have this condition is a fear and anxiety stress response? Well, it certainly makes sense that we see her doing it in this video, considering what we observed happened in this video. But, you know, no one could be sure. Sadly, Bella's not here on this earth to meet and observe and speak with. And I didn't know her in life, unfortunately, and never had a chance to do any of those things. But I do have a pretty heavy suspicion. Let's take a look at what else we can determine through the videos and pictures available. Hello. Hey, wait, we gotta stop. We gotta stop before we go across the road. Look both Remember? ways. Look both ways. Your hair came out. Yeah, she pulled him out. Pulled him out. Hey, no car was coming. Hi, Cece. Careful. Careful, boo. As little Bella is running down the street and approaches Shanann, she says, her hair fell out. And Chris Watts responds, she pulled them out. And Shannon says, she pulled them out. And as Shanann asks what happened to Bella's hair, Bella looks up at Shanann. I feel like she is always on the lookout to say, like, am I going to get in trouble? Am I going to get in trouble about that? Am I going to get in trouble because my hair is not right? But you see this very large, you know, patch or strip without any hair. So the question, you know, for me is, if we're just trying to understand Bella and what was going on with her hair. You know, was her hair patchy? Was she actually pulling her hair out to that degree? Or was she pulling out the ponytails? Now, I think it's important to know another example where we can see Bella actually starting to pull her hair is when she is singing that heart-wrenching, Daddy is my hero song in July of 2018, right before the tragedy occurred. It appears that somewhere in the middle of the song, she forgot the words and she appears to become nervous. And she starts to run her fingers through her hair on her head. She's kind of scratching and it definitely looks to me like she's pulling at that hair. Again, I think it was a nervous, anxious response for Bella. But another cause of Bella's missing or light hair could be, or might be a combination of a couple of these things, the literal rubber bands that they use to put Cece and Bella's hair up. I mean, I think even putting their hair up when they were so little with rubber bands was silly as it is. All you women out there, no, all you people with hair out there, if you've ever used a rubber band in your hair, if you've gotten it stuck or just when it's time to pull it out, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Rubber bands in your hair, they freaking hurt. And they pull your hair so wicked tight. It feels like your hair is going to rip right out of your scalp. They're really very painful little mechanisms.
It is my belief, based on what we can see of the family dynamics of the Watts family, based on what we can see through the Facebook posts, the pictures, the captions, and the videos, that Bella's personality started to change from being a carefree and joyful baby to a more pensive and sometimes seemingly depressed older baby, toddler, and young child uh, because of two things. Her self-image, the way she was talked to, and the way certain characteristics about her were talked about. Primarily, I'm talking about her hair, and we're going to look at some examples here, some more examples. And also, I think Bella's personality started to change because of the way that she felt about herself as compared to her sister, Cece, or Celeste Catherine Watts. Now, it is in my opinion that Shanann was using hair, as silly as it may seem, as a weapon against Bella when Bella did not comply with her wishes. And if you're doubting what I'm saying here, just hang with me for another couple of minutes and I'm going to show you exactly what it is I'm talking about. So the ridiculous and almost obsessive commentary on Bella's hair started when she was very young. On July 2nd, 2015, this says, Bella's first itty bitty pigtails. So Bella was only about a year and a half old and look at how absurd it is to try to put her hair into an itty bitty pigtail with a very painful rubber band when she has that little hair. And then on July 16th, a couple days later, finally, a little hair, sunscreen and pool water equals messy hair. So hair, hair, hair. We are always commenting on Bella's hair. September 1st, 2015, Bella's first pigtails, plural, lasted five minutes. She will keep bows in her hair all day long, but pigtails, not so much. And we're going to go back to those bows. July 12th, 2016. This kid cracks me up. She wanted lotion to rub on her face. Then she styled her hair with it. I'm dying over here, making just a big old point that her daughter, Bella, does in fact have some hair. The caption here is, this is why we always wear bows in our hair, because somebody asked if that was her little boy. I cut the caption off here, but this is also from 2016. December 24th, 2015, haha, -ha, Bella with hair, you know, Christmas Eve, they always have a great time celebrating the children on Christmas Eve, as we have learned in this video, and you may have learned before, very sadly. August 6, 2016, Bella with hair, hashtag Cabbage Patch Kid, I mean, guys, like, seriously? And there's also this thing with bedhead, which I'm going to show you more about in a couple of video clips. This says, she's in the in-between stages of her hair growth. Hashtag bedhead, August 1st, 2016. So this doesn't stop in the 2017. It says, poor kid, I asked her why she puts her blanket on her head. And she said, it's her long hair. So we're going from 2015, 2016, 2017. Constant commentary on Bella's hair or lack of hair. Bella just woke up for a nap and Pop Pop poured him, her and himself some gummy bears. You know, she's referring to the bedhead here and that's January 11th, 2017. And this is also in 2017. She has some little pigtails in Bella's hair. Celeste has some successful pigtails and she posts the two pictures. There's so much more. I'm going to have to actually continue this material in the part three for the Bella's Story series, but watch these video clips where Shanann is commenting on Bella's hair and Bella's reaction. You guys want to see this bedhead? There's some bedhead there. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> she got some serious... I, I need that one. You can have this one. Careful, Careful baby. So this is what happens when you are... Bella, say hi. Hi. Look at that hair. Hi, honey. Hi. Hey, guys. Say hi, Cece. Say hi, Bells. Hi, Bells. No, you gotta say hi. Hi. Look at your hair. So, I, um, Bella saw all my video earlier and she was like, I wanna do that. So we went live. And I have my new tripod, tripod, 
tripod that just came in the mail, so I'm super excited to be using it hands free. Hi. Your hair. So I, so um, Taylor, Bella saw all brownies all that Bella's been eating on you. She should have came over. That, so we went Say hi, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Say I miss you. I miss you. When you coming to see me? I think you can see me. Yeah, say that's my bed head I just woke up to. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. You want mommy's water? Wash down that brownie. Yeah, say that's my bed head I just woke up to. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. You want mommy's water? Are just telling me hello and saying hi. Hey Madison. Hi Bella. Bella, say hi Madison. Hi Madison. Say hi to Kelly. Hi Kelly. Say hi Kimberly. <laughs> say hi Kim. Hi Kim. You can say Kim. <laughs> so I just wanted to tell you guys how grateful I am for all of you to be in my life. <laughs> Do you not like that cheese? I want it though. You want it? Mm -hmm. Wait, okay. Um, and how grateful I am to have my kids in my life and my husband and my family. Um, I can't tell you guys how much I am blessed um, every day. And so today I want to um, help somebody. So whether, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be with Thrive. Um, if you need, um, need anything or, you know, just need someone to talk to, just let me know. I, can, I don't know what to do with this hair. Um, but I also want to bless somebody through Lavelle um, because it's blessed me and my family and given no, me. Okay, baby, I'll throw it away. Now, while Bella's hair is not growing, and we make a big deal about Bella's head, bed head, and what you can or can't do with her hair, in the family, there is also a very big deal made about what you can do with Cece's hair. And it's obviously a lot more than Bella's hair, and why that is, we are not exactly sure, but imagine how that makes Bella feel. I think that you can probably see in those video clips that I played, the reaction that Bella has when her mother comments on her hair and she can see her reflection in that camera that's video recording them. Do you see her looking at her reflection? And then she compares herself to her sister. So this post says, school hooked Chris up and did Celeste hair today, LOL. So one of the things that Chris did to bond with Cece or that bonded him with Cece was to do her hair. And we see pictures and videos of him doing Celeste's hair, but never doing Bella's hair. It is a known fact that Chris had a special relationship with Cece. In fact, he himself says that he felt closer to Cece because, well, what he says is that Bella had a close relationship with Shanann, so that was kind of taken, that relationship real estate, so to speak, and that when they first had Bella, it was his first child, and he didn't really know how to take care of her, so in not knowing how to take care of baby Bella, he didn't bond with her as much as he did with Cece. You know, we see all these adorable videos like the one right here, except for him looking at the medication he's going to give them before he goes to bed, but that's a whole other story of Cece and Chris laughing and singing and doing silly things, and we don't really see those videos of Chris and Bella. It's just kind of sad for Bella. It's like, who did she bond with in a meaningful way other than her sister? In this clip, Shanann is recording Chris trying to do Cece's hair before Shanann is going away for one of those Thrive by Lavelle trips and, you know, just making a big deal about how cute and fun it is to do Cece's hair. But no Bella in the picture. He doesn't have to do Bella's hair because at this point, Bella probably doesn't have any hair. Hold the spray. Need your hair wet enough to uh... Hold the spray. This is, this is epic. Alright, now I'm confused what I gotta do, right? I don't know what's... Uh, yeah, so CC, you might, I might just have to comb over your hair like this and say, hey, oh, let me just slick it back real fast, but it's not parted. We'll go a little Val Kilmer look from Top Gun. Yeah? Let's do it. Get a little hair. Ready? Set? <laughs> Cece, what's Cece, Daddy doing? Cece, I am doing? so sorry. So this is what happens in when I go to Dallas. You're not gonna get your hair done. No, I'll brush it. All done. I'll brush it. We'll do a little. We'll do mohawks. Oh, I'll put a little Cece, gel in it. I'm mohawks. sorry. We'll teach Daddy. 
you may know this next video clip. This is of Shaman baking Christmas cookies with the girls and things did not go well for the girls because well Shanann just wanted to put on a show for the camera and the girls did not really get get to participate and also they were not feeling well in this video I believe that Bella is treated particularly poorly and at the end of the video is one example of when I believe that Shanann weaponizes the fact that Cece has hair, longer hair, and can wear pigtails, and Bella doesn't. So watch here in the beginning of the video before things really went downhill, and she tells Bella to show everybody her lips because she put on lipstick, and Bella is so proud to do so. Okay. Chris, we get the baking soda? Yep. It's craziness over here. Hey, Jen. Say hi, Jen. Okay. Bella wanted lipstick on like mommy today. Show her your lips and CC too. No kisses. <laughs> um, right now we're making chocolate chip cookies. We're gonna make sugar Go cookies, here. Italian cookies. Um, now watch here how Bella is still watching herself in the image on the phone that is recording them and she's very aware of what she is doing and what the people who are watching are seeing. So as this video continues on, and it's in double time right now, a series of things go wrong. The girls keep trying to be part of the cooking making process, and every time they start to play with something or feel like they're a part of the process, or sometimes even before, Shanann takes all of the material away. This clearly left the girls feeling extremely defeated. There's a few times where, you know, Bella started to cry and she was able to regroup and kind of get herself together and continue on. But nevertheless, both of the girls are really struggling here, more so Bella. Cece seems to be making a time of it on some occasions. And at some point, Bella finally absolutely cracks. She just can't help it. And I mean, my gosh, you really can't blame her. Look at right there, every single thing taken away from that poor little girl. When she does finally start to crack, Chris reminds her that she's on camera. And then what happens next when Bella just starts to hysterically cry really just breaks my heart. I want you to watch what she does with her hands on her face. She's trying to push her mouth into a smile because I believe at this point in her young life, she has learned that when the camera is recording, what you are supposed to do is put on a smile. When you do, mommy is happy with you. Mommy rewards you. And when you do not, especially if you're Bella, mommy is very upset. And I imagine there's probably hell to pay. Um, okay, we're not putting that in there yet. Not yet. Wait, Cece. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, give me. Give me for a second. Say, oh yeah. <laughs> Bella, no whining. Bella, look, everybody's watching. Look, they're watching you. Say hi. Hey, Bella. Cece. Cece, you want to say hi, Papa? Say hi, Mimi, Papa. Hi, Nana. All right. Cece. Good job scooping, though. <laughs> Thank you, Juanita. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Easy. No, no. I'll give you. Hold on. This might turn into a mess. <laughs> Okay. I got you. Cece. How about I'll give you guys this? All right, we got little bowls. All right. Good job. I want the orange. No. Mine. No. 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 You want orange one? No. 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 Girls. Girls. Oh, CC Bella. Okay. You want chocolate? No chocolate? If you want chocolate, you just get this bowl. Here is Bella uses her hands to try to push her mouth into a smile. This is the morning. This is why I love that I thrive. You want blue? I have another blue one. That's Look at that. Blue. All right, then no chocolates okay. for you. All right, guys. 
First, we have the no chocolates for you. Shanann takes away Bella's chocolate chips. And if you're somebody that is familiar with this family dynamic and has watched some of these videos, you know that Bella loves her chocolate chips. Okay. We love you guys. <laughs> Hannah, oh my goodness. Literally, I am glad I thrive because I can handle it. You ate it all? I love it. Oh, you don't want them? Okay. You don't have to have chocolate. I thought it'd make them happy, but I guess it doesn't. Bye. Say bye. 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 Show me your pigtail, Cece. Show me your hair. Cece was a good girl. She said bye right, to the right, camera on go. cue. Bye, and show me your pigtail, Cece. But wait, what about Bella? Bella doesn't have pigtails. And look at Bella trying to look nice or, or do some trick or something for the camera. This seriously, guys, just breaks my heart. There is so much more to tell about Bella's story. I hope that in this part two episode, you were able to see how Bella's personality started to change from being a very joyful and carefree little baby girl to a more brooding and pensive and solemn older baby, toddler, and young child. I just feel so connected to Bella. She's such a sweet soul. And may all of these angels rest in peace. Please leave a comment letting us know what you think about this video. We all want to know what you think.